Hello and welcome to Emma Reads Reddit. Today I'm reading from r slash today I fucked up. But first let's play r slash drunk or a kid. Inspired by How I Met Your Mother, I give you a real life scenario and you guess whether it was a drunk or a kid. This one was posted by me, but I posted it wrong so it was immediately removed by moderators. Decided to walk home commando styly, ducking behind bushes and fences and stopping as still as I could if a car passed. It took me twice as long to get home. But what do we think? Was I a drunk or a kid? Find out at the end of the video. Now back to r slash today I fucked up. This was posted by user The Lampoon. Today I fucked up by accidentally eating marijuana edibles. So my fiance of two years is a marijuana consumer. She enjoys a good buzz after work and I enjoy a glass of whiskey and a cigar once a month. That's just the way we are. She's happy. I'm happy. She always wanted to get me stoned since our first date, since I'd never tried marijuana, and I had always promised that our wedding night would be our first time getting high together. I include this information because I feel I need to emphasise how unprepared my body was for what happened to me. Yesterday, I got out of the hospital due to COVID complications. I'm feeling about 80% normal, I'd say congested but normal and I felt extremely exhausted so I went to our bedroom and crashed out. When I awoke the thirst in my mouth was sandy and the heat from my body seemed almost leached entirely into the bed. So I got up and looked at my phone as you do and I see that it's around 11.30pm. I walk into my kitchen and I get myself a giant glass of cold water. My fiance is on a video calls with her friends in the living room. Foggy smoke fills the air. She has Oreos by her but I am balls out naked and if I were to go, her webcam would surely capture the schmeat and broadcast it to four women and a flamboyantly gay man enjoying their night. But I'm sleepy and I want... So, in my stupor, I open the snack cupboard and grab... Peach rings? That's all the bag says on the top. Brand, peach rings. I pop one in my mouth and grab two more and put the baggie back in the cabinet and scuttled off. But after the second peach ring, the aftertaste was bitter. I figured they were just sugar free, but because I had a mild allergic reaction to some sweeteners, I decided to go back to read the ingredients on the back of the package. On the front of the bag, it actually says brand THC infused peach rings, 60 milligrams. My initial thoughts weren't so abnormal. 60 milligrams sounds like nothing. Like if I took a 60 milligram ibuprofen, that would barely be any ibuprofen, right? So my logic was that it would be like taking almost nothing. So I called my fiancé into the room with me and I told her what happened. She told me to eat something right away. She ended up warming me up some Chef Boyardee ravioli and sat me down at our dining table and I pulled out my phone to watch something. Between bites of nuclear tomato sauce and super processed and meat filled pasta, I picked up my phone and went to type King of the Hill on Hulu. I got three letters in and suddenly it felt like I just had my hand in the snow. You know that numb sensation that makes you feel like your hand is a lot fatter or wider than it is. I couldn't muster the dexterity to type anymore. Then I looked over to my fiancé and it was like a laggy video game. I moved but my vision didn't keep up with my movement. Like 30 seconds later I was mentally where my body was. I could only say what I felt in that moment, a long and whispery, no. That got the attention of my lover who looked at me and said, how does your nose feel? Which cued me to touch my nose. It felt like it was feet away from my eyes. From here, my memory gets spotty, but here's how I remember the rest of the night. The time on my phone was now 12.45 a.m. My fiance tells me to finish my food, and I did, but every bite felt it was minutes long. When I ate all of my ravioli, I said I wanted to go to bed. Suddenly, I am in bed, and I look at my phone. It's 12.50. This upsets me. I remember trying to reason with my feelings because I felt like it should have been much later. My fiancé comes into the bedroom. I ask her how I got there. She laughs. I blink. She's gone. I call for her. She's next to the bed now, and I get an overwhelming sense of dread in my gut and chest. Everything is spinning. She tells me I'll be okay and touches my head. I close my eyes for what feels like a long while. I open them. It's 1.15am 
and I'm relatively lucid, and, and paranoia is just barely getting his dick lubed up for me. At some point, I wanted to cuddle with my women, because I felt like I was somewhat safe when we were closely embraced. From this point forward, this is what she says happened. You wanted me to cuddle you, but your fever was so hot, I couldn't just spoon you in good conscience. But you tucked your face into my neck and the rest of your body was diagonal across the bed. You asked how long the feeling would last. I told you that you weren't even at your peak yet. And you cried. Which is so not you. You don't cry. Which got me panicked. You asked me to read the back of the package to you. And when I got up to go get it, you stopped me and asked me where I was going. When I told you, you said okay. Then, when I got back, you asked me where I went. You said thank you for the macaroni about 10 times, and I said you're welcome, but then I asked what macaroni. Your final time, which made you talk about how they don't eat meat sauce on their spaghetti in Italy. You told me that if you died of Rona, that you didn't want me to tell your mom and dad you did weed. You asked me to read a Wikipedia article about how to stop a weed overdose, which I couldn't find because it doesn't exist. I made you chew on black peppercorns because it makes some people sober up but you just kept saying you couldn't taste it. At about 2, 2.30am, you just kept asking me how long it had been every 2 to 5 minutes. Then you fell asleep, and you'd wake up, and then wake me up periodically to tell me you think it's going away. And that's how it went for a few hours. Things I apparently hallucinated while awake and did not dream like I thought I did. My bed filling with water like a waterbed. My sisters coming over but hiding from me. My phone ringing. The window, second story, being tapped on. My dad coming in the room and saying things to me like, I'm disappointed in you. The room moving in twisty ways or like I was floating on a boat. In conclusion, it's now been 16 hours and I still feel a little off. My fiancé says there's things that she won't tell me about my time on my trip, things she wants to keep to herself. She says they aren't about her or me, but she thinks that they're a big part of who I am and that she loves me even more because... She says she has seen my realest self. Also, I was in hysterics at a few point in the night and she doesn't want me to feel too embarrassed. In the comments, NSA chatbot had this to say. Every story with edibles. 1. I don't feel anything. 2. I don't feel anything. 3. I don't feel anything. 4. I don't feel anything. 5. I don't feel anything. 6. Please take me to the hospital! Edibles are no joke, but even so, usually yield a much laughter. Now back to r slash drunk or a kid. So, was I a drunk or a kid? I was... A drunk. Walking back home from a party around 5am. Did you guess right? I did, because it was me! Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed what you've heard, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss any of the daily content from Emma Reads Reddit. See you tomorrow.